Over the past several decades, gun violence has become a common occurrence in America's schools. Just this year alone, there have been shootings in or around at least 19 schools in this country, leaving 19 people dead, including seven children. After the attacks, we hear a lot from parents, lawmakers, and other adults. But a local group of middle schoolers is putting the spotlight on the people most affected by these shootings, the students themselves. No student should be afraid to go to school. No child should be murdered. In America, we need to do something. There are newly elected members of Congress. We would create stronger gun legislation so that one day no child is killed by gun violence. Not me. Not me. Never again. The film called Not Me, Children Caught in the Crossfire was made for C-SPAN's annual student documentary competition, Student Cam. And the three student filmmakers behind it took home third place in a national competition. Those students join me now. They are Felicia Curtis, Ellie Epstein, and Coco Shen, who are all eighth graders at Neshoba Brook School in Concord. Thank you all, and congratulations on your win. This is such a big deal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Felicia, I'll start with you. Just tell me, give me a sense of what your what the, the competition was and what your mandate was for making a film. So basically every year um, C-SPAN does a student cam contest where they're given a prompt. This year's prompt was, if you were a newly elected member of Congress, what would you change and why? And so each year at Neshoba, eighth grade spends the winter term in their social studies class creating a six minute documentary and uploading it onto C-SPAN, so yeah, that's what we did. And how did you arrive, Ellie, at this notion of looking at gun violence in this country and issues of gun control? This is like a very bad issue in America, and the thing is it affects many, many children, and yet children are not allowed to vote. Children can't vote to pass laws, so it's a really big problem that children and schools are the ones that are being very badly affected and it is important for us to make these documentaries and these videos to spread more public awareness about this. Well Coco, walk me through how you did this, how you collaborated and and how you decided what the arc of this film would be. Um, well, so we had like, res during our researching process we like we split up um, our roles, so like Felicia, she was like finding clips and I was researching and Ellie was doing the editing. And we sort of like planned it out as we went because the more we researched, the more um, a bit we got like an idea of like what our um, film, like the arc of the film was going to be. It, it, what, was there a message that you wanted to leave audiences with? Was it your, your story that you were telling people? Um, no. we. Um, I think Felicia had a story about her experience, but um, we just wanted to spread awareness about what we can do to help this. So Felicia, what was your experience that you wanted to bring? Um, when I was 11 years old in my town, I went to a small private Catholic school and um, a couple houses over there was a armed robbery um, that resulted in a shooting. And because I went to a small school, we had no forms of Alice training. Um, what is that? Alice drills are a type of drill, like a fire drill, that students do, um, and they're mandated all over the U.S. so students can be safe for a school shooter coming in if that were to happen. And since we did not have any of that, our school was told to put into shelter in place in a lockdown, and we were all in the back of the classroom crying, hoping that the gun hot, gunshots we heard outside wouldn't come inside our building. And how old you, were you when that happened? I was 11. Ellie, what is it like to be in school? Do you think about the potential of school shootings constantly? I think it feels like every night we're turning on the news and we're seeing it in some capacities, not always in schools, but often enough in schools. So how top of mind is it for you? It's honestly, sometimes they'll tell us when there will be an Alice drill and I just can't stop thinking about it because it almost feels like it's real. And I never like I never want to leave my classroom because I always think, what if that were to happen? Or like, what if even like a real shooting were to happen while I wasn't in the classroom? And what if we just didn't know what to do? So for a while, while we were researching this, it was at the top of my mind a lot. And I, just, I couldn't stop thinking about like, what if that were to happen to us? What are those drills like? It, they did change the protocol this year, 
if there's like a whistle, someone is basically whistling, which would be the gunshots, like if this were to actually happen. And if we can hear the whistle, we're to stay in our classroom and like barricade the doors. If you can't hear the whistle, we're supposed to be going outside, running away. And the teachers always tell us before, like Alice drill, this is what you're going to do. And if this is like a real thing, this is what you would do. Like you would run across the street, across the parking lot. It's, it always, it always makes me very nervous as well to hear about this. Like they say, if this were to actually happen, and I remember this can actually happen. Coco, you were just, as you were walking us through how the film is made and who you're depicting, we see a lot of government officials here. How did you choose who you were going to feature and what they were saying? Um, so f we were researching and a lot of the um, websites we used while we were researching were organizations, so we contacted, we contacted the people from those organizations and just saw if they were willing to like answer a few questions for us. We also like looked on the news and saw like n a lot of legislators that were talking about this and we just sent an email out to them and asked them if they were willing to talk. Uh, Ellie, I was struck by something you said that partly you made this film because you're talking about yourselves and you can't vote. You don't have a say in government at this age. What would you like to see government do? There's many things that any many regulations that could be passed to prevent these like shootings that aren't being passed such as background checks there has been like a lot of talk about background checks yet a lot of sometimes background checks fail and it's important that we have like better background checks also we're not we're not advocating for like banning all guns but it's important that there we take these like regulations we take these ideas like background checks, safe storage. Many children, there are accidental shootings. Children can find guns that aren't locked up safely and they could accidentally shoot themselves. And also banning things like assault weapons. Assault weapons are very dangerous and you actually, there's no minimum age to buy an assault weapon, yet you have to be 18 and buy a handgun. Felicia, what do you think this is born of when we see students bringing guns to school and, and these horrible shootings? Um, well, it, it oftentimes goes back to the mental health crisis this country's having and not having safe storage and having the access to gun, being able to access a gun at home. Um, it's very easy for someone who's not in the right mindset um, to harm themselves or others. And with the internet growing and society as a whole, especially after the pandemic, people have been a lot more sheltered and isolated and it's been hard to find help for your mental health. So having safe storage so that if you own a gun that someone doesn't get it into the wrong hands would, would be very helpful, especially because since you can only buy a handgun at 18, but you can be, at least in Massachusetts, 15 to buy a gun, that means someone of my age. I can't drive, I can't vote, I can't legally make my own decisions, but I can go buy an assault rifle that can kill hundreds of people in a matter of minutes. You're, you're rattling off all of this information, that, but you, you've, uh, it's not a pejorative that I'm, I'm saying this. You, you have this information at the ready. Why have you committed to this in this way? It, it's an important topic and a, a lot of, it, it's not talked about as much unless there is a shooting. There's often a shooting and it's talked about for a month at most and then it kind of dies down because it's kind of become normal in our country. But this is our reality as students. We go to school every single day and in the back of our minds thinking we could die in a place where we're supposed to grow and learn and doing this documentary has definitely opened our eyes to like, wow, this is a really big problem and we are the ones affected by the problem and we can't do anything about it. Do you think it's going to change by the time you, you come of age to vote? Sadly, I don't think so. I'm coming of age to vote in three years and I haven't seen, there's been little to any change over since the shooting in Columbine in 1999 and the fact that it took 20 years for them to even sign a bipartisan law into a agreement is absurd. It shouldn't 
be, take that long for children's safety. What about you, Coco? What, how, what's your optimism that things will change? Um, well, I definitely hope that things will be able to change by the time we are able to vote. But even if it isn't, then we will definitely advocate for more safety for children in schools. Ellie, I want to go back to the, the notion of social media and where people are living online before some of these shootings. How much of a driver is that? Because I think I'm part of a generation that doesn't necessarily understand this. We didn't grow up with this. We didn't live in this world, and it is a whole world. It's a full space. Same for a lot of the politicians who are not making these decisions, not moving things forward. So what is that world like in terms of gun violence? So many things are posted on, like, social media. A lot of people will say things like, stop gun violence on social media. But the thing is that social media sometimes just doesn't make a huge, like, it doesn't really spread awareness as well. But for many people, it can, like, social media is a way to speak their mind. And so that's, like, what's happening a lot right now. But it's like social media is also having a really large impact on like teenagers like around the world and it can definitely like change how they see things like anything can be posted on social media so it's really social media can actually change a lot which can be a good thing but i guess could also be a bad thing well finally just quickly felicia is this is this a prompt where do you go next now that you're award-winning documentary filmmakers um I don't know, golf to high school, I guess. But yeah. um, of course, like Coco said, we're going to continue to advocate for this because it's something very important. But we just hope that because we can't vote and because we can't, we're sheltered and we can't speak our minds, um, this is a way for us to do it. So we hope that this documentary can spread to the world and maybe some politician sees it and says, this is a real problem that we need to fix. Well, Felicia Curtis, Ellie Epstein, Coco Shen, Thank you, and again, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. To watch their full film and to learn more about the C-SPAN contest, head to studentcam.org.